According to Einstein, even a small body like the Earth should drag space with it as it spins. Not by much, but it should be measurable. All set, Dave? Yeah. Okay, here we go. The Gravity Probe B satellite will put this theory to the test. Protected from disturbance deep in the interior of the satellite's vacuum capsule will be four of the world's most perfect gyroscopic spheres mounted in a block of pure quartz. As the satellite orbits the poles, it should be dragged ever so slightly off course by the way the spinning Earth drags space around with it. The gyroscopes will accumulate this minuscule deflection. After each week in orbit, it will be like trying to measure the width of a human hair from a distance of 10 miles. The gyroscopes have to be machined so smoothly that if they were the size of the planet, the tallest mountain would be only 8 feet high. science catches up with the wilder speculations of black hole theory. Another country, another telescope. The hunt takes Phil Charles to Australia. Australia has access to the southern hemisphere of the sky and there we can see the Magellanic Clouds. And the large Magellanic Cloud is our nearest neighboring galaxy. And there are about half a dozen very interesting compact objects that we want to study from here. We need to get maybe 20 or 30 so that you can really see the, 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 the population of black holes that we're, we're looking at. Uh, do they all have similar masses? Are they a spread of mass? Do they all come from the same kinds of original stars? We can start to work that out once we can get enough of them. While Phil Charles turns his sights on the stars of our neighboring galaxy, other astronomers are probing galaxies further afield. Here they are finding objects of staggering immensity, formed not from the death of a single star, but from the collapse of enough matter to make millions. Such objects, astronomers now believe, are supermassive black holes. Ever since radio telescopes 